Welcome back, folks, to the Membership Machine Show. This is episode 90. In this episode, we're going to be discussing the best plugins if you want to do email marketing in 2024. We're going to be looking... Our main focus is going to be around WordPress and email automation and email marketing. But we're also going to look at some of the SaaS leading products because there's a lot of um, mixture of different services and plugins and we're going to delve in it so hopefully we can clear some of the confusion around this so you can choose the right product uh, and really get on with marketing your membership community website i've got my regular semi-regular co-host he's a special guest but he's semi-regular um, I've got Kirk with me. Kirk, would you like to introduce yourself? Absolutely, Jonathan. Thank you. Uh, my name is Kurt, Kurt Von Annen. I run an agency called Manana Nomas. We focus largely on membership and learning websites, specifically with SCORM. And I also work directly with WP Tonic and Lifter LMS. That's fantastic. Um, before we go into the meat and potatoes of this great show, I've got a couple of messages from our major sponsors. We will be back in a few moments, folks. Hi there, e-commerce store owner. At Omnisend, we help more than 100,000 e-commerce customers just like you sell their products. We're an all-in-one email and SMS marketing platform that helps you reach your customers, grow your audience, and increase sales. In fact, our customers have seen incredible results with Omnisend, averaging $72 in revenue for every single dollar spent. And if you ever have a question, our award-winning customer support team is available 24-7 every single day. That's one of the reasons we have more than 6,000 glowing reviews and ratings all across the web. So get started with Omnisend today and start growing your business with better email and SMS marketing. Coming back, folks, I want to point out we've got some amazing special offers from the major sponsors, plus a curated list of the best WordPress plugins and services that will help you build a membership or community-focused website on WordPress. Plus, we've got a great course at a fantastic special offer price, which was done by Kirk, that shows you how to build from the beginning to end a membership community-focused website in 2024 on WordPress using the latest technology. And you find all these goodies by going over to wp-tonic.com slash deals. wp-tonic.com slash deals deals find all the goodies there what more could you ask for uh um so i do like saying that uh um, so let's go straight into it kurt um so i think there's three buckets here kurt there's the pure wordpress plugin native solution as i call it mm -hmm. um and if you that has some great strengths because it tends these plug-in, pure plug-in email newsletter stroke automation plugins tend to have a lot of integration with the leading learning management systems like Lifter LMS, Learn Dash or Tutor LMS and with membership plugins. But I recommend that if you're really serious about building an e-learning business in 2024, you should just go straight to using a learning management system. So you've got these native plugins. Then there's a second bucket, which is a SaaS-based software as a service, but they offer a really great WordPress plugin and they integrate in WordPress not as well as the pure native um, plugin solutions, but they do a pretty good job. And they also offer a lot of functionality, which you might be interested in or you might not be. We're going to be going through this in this episode. And then there's the third bucket that might offer a plugin but it's a very stripped down solution that doesn't really, it just about works in WordPress. Um, 
but you you will hit walls quite rapidly or you're probably going to have to utilize something like wp fusion yep. to get the kind of access that you really want what, exactly. what's your re, what's your response to the three kind of buckets that i've outlined initially do you think i'm on the right track oh you're you're definitely on the right track jonathan and what i find um more and more frequently when I'm interacting with clients is there is a great disconnect between what a CRM actually is versus the perspective of what the client or the user envisions it to be. Um, you know, there's so much more to email than just the tool. You know, you've got to, you got to plan your content. You have to know it. And as you plan your content and as you know how you're going to use that system, that use case dictates probably what your best tool is. You know, just because Fluent might be great for one person doesn't mean it's the best tool for everybody. But um, I, I've I've noticed myself when you talked about restrictions. Next thing you know, you're you think it's going to work. You think it's going to do everything you want it to do, and then the customer says, "Well, I want to automate when they fill out this form or get this email. This thing happens with the membership or the or the course." And then you're like, well, now that's a Zapier integration, right? It's Zapier or WP Fusion or WP Autom uh, Automator WP or something. But it, it ends up being a, um, your term would be witch's brew. Americans would probably call it, you know, a Frankenstein setup, right? Where now you've got three or four tools activated and configured just to send a message or to activate something. And so that, that level of complication, if you do that over and over and over again, can become, you know, quite a spider web of mess there. And you see that in the SaaS world, even if you're not going to use WordPress, yeah. if you decided that you're going to use something like Wix or Squarespace, um, you'll find that you really got to do a delve because um, a lot of the SaaS offer a lot of functionality, but that also shows up in their price. And a lot of that functionality you might not be interested in or not for quite a period of time, you're not going to utilize, but you're paying for it. And then there's also deliver deliverability. I struggled there. Um, there's a lot of issues, but so you've got those three buckets and then dividing those, there are a couple sub buckets as I put it. And that's the difference between marketing optimization emails and a newsletter email there's a lot of cross fertilization but i do see them as two clearly ex differentials you know a lot of people you can have a very bare bone email as a newsletter and there was a lot of recommendation that that style you should go with a couple of years ago because it seemingly would get into people's inboxes i think google and microsoft and the leading inbox mail providers their te technologies become much more sophisticated so that doesn't really work and then you've got the whole thing with a newsletter you want branding you want your logo you you know having a bare bone doesn't reinforce your branding purposes where more marketing optimization type email or um, trying to encourage persons to go back to your membership website to re-engage in the course to reduce churn all the things that you want to encourage students because churn is a major problem it is one of the major problems in e-learning having a successful membership website so what do you reckon about what i've just outlined kurt uh i agree with most of it um again my thing is i really drive down to, to use case and people's efficiency with the tools i am consistently perplexed at um people's lack of preparedness or people's lack of effort in this particular segment of web development or web usage, however you want to phrase that. Uh, the lack of preparedness, the lack of content, the lack of strategy. 
um, and the lack of follow through. Those are things that regardless of what tool you choose, I think could really hinge on whether you find success or not. You had mentioned getting people to re-engage with courses. And uh, that's a practice with me, you know, quite frequently in the e-learning space. And that is, you know, having a tool that can fire off a list of email sequences based on somebody's activity throughout a course, that takes a lot to set up. A lot of people don't realize the work and effort that goes into it. And then I think we're going to talk about this a little bit, but like email performance, right? We want to, how many people open it? How many people click through it? How many people do it? Because then you have to be willing to analyze your results and tweak it to constantly get it where it needs to go. Yeah. Do you think that people don't, and I've fallen into this, you can have fantastic resources on your website that really explain how to use the membership website, how they navigate, log in, navigate. You could be all in your help section. It, you could have a, a massive button saying frequently asked questions. You can have all sorts of things that are big and clear on your website. People won't see it. Nope. The most old, you know, it could be in your footer. Oh, well, I don't, I, there's nothing on your website that tells me how to use your course. Um, well, I didn't know that. Well, it's a big section of your frequently asked questions. Well, I couldn't be bothered to read that. What I'm trying to point out, unless you have onboarding sequence and then you also have automation when if somebody signs up for your course and they don't, they don't log in for a period of time, you need a sequence of automations that encourages them to log in. Because if they don't log in and you have a, a period of refund, which most um, kosher membership websites do give a reasonable period where you will get a full refund, um, they're going to ask for a refund. <laughs> um, because they've gone on to other things, life is busy. Um, they've forgotten, and then the first, and then they think, "Oh well, I'm not using it. I want a refund." So this is important. So when it comes to WordPress, there are one or two other concepts that you need to know about the native solutions, as I as I describe them, have enormous benefits. But there is, like many things in WordPress, there are some minor additional hoops that you have to jump through or things you need to know um, but they're not major the SaaS solutions tend to play on this a little bit not so much in the email marketing but um, when it comes to actual e-learning platforms they say that WordPress is a little bit more complicated well, I've been using some of the leading platforms, SaaS platforms lately, and I can tell you there that the more powerful ones are not easy to use. So the main concept you've got to understand is SMTP. That, that is a technology that allows your WordPress website to actually communicate with an email sending engine. And I'm going to explain this second concept quickly. But this bit of technology communicates with the native WordPress email plugin with your email sending engine, as I call it. And without this bit of communication, not much is going to happen. And the best plugin, and it's totally free, and it is the best, is Fluent. SMTP, but I think it is clearly the best, and it, um, there are some others that are pushed, but this is totally free, and it comes from one of the major native WordPress email and marketing automation plugins. They really know what they're doing, and I would have no hesitation in recommending this plugin. And it works with other systems, and you'd be totally happy, I feel. The other can, can I sorry, jump in? Yes, yeah, sorry, go on, yeah. 
I, I think for new users and listeners that are hearing what we're talking about, there's probably an air of confusion. And I want to make sure that we clear that. When you start a WordPress website, your site does send email like a new like you've registered for a website and it triggers an email that says, welcome, you've registered for a website. There's transactional email and then there's marketing email. And when you want to send email in mass from your website or connected to your website, you then you need these things that Jonathan is talking about. It's just like when people say, I don't understand why you say I need a video host to do my videos. WordPress can host a video. It's like, no, you don't want to host video in your WordPress website. Just like you don't want to try to force your WordPress website uh, to run uh, a yeah. massive well, this, email. This is the whole area that confuses um, folks. There are a quite a lot of hosting providers that do provide inbox and transactional email. Yeah. Um, but there's also a lot of WordPress hosting providers that don't. And like WP Engine, Kinster, some of the better providers, they don't provide email functionality. Um, there's various reasons why they don't. I'm not going to go into them in this show. It'll be <laughs> a bit too long. But it's about 50-50. But those that do, they have very tight limits daily limits about how many email transactional what do i mean by transactional i mean if somebody finishes a course and they need a certificate many learning management systems like lifter lms will send a certificate when they finish the course or you, that's a perfect example well that's what is called transactional email marketing email is around like an onboarding series or if somebody doesn't hasn't logged in there but there's also both transactional marketing there's a gray area so some people would say that what i've just expressed goes into transactional but it's yeah. a gray area right folks um well um like i say 50 of the hosting will allow you to send out transactional or marketing email, but they only let you send out a, a, at best 100 a day or might be a bit more generous than that. But if you've got any kind of list at all, you can't really... And their native sending limits, they normally don't end up in people's inboxes. Um, um, they're really quite poor so you really need a engine provider so the plugin provides the front end the end the plugin provides a screen where you can set up your automations you can build your newsletter it gives you the interface to build a nice looking newsletter or set up your marketing automation it won't send it out um, only the sasses will do that but you but you need to set up a email sending engine and there's a number there's a number of them and they're normally a lot cheaper than the SaaS solutions so the combination of a WordPress plugin with one of these engines is still normally a lot cheaper and in some ways can be a lot more powerful. I probably lost most of, of the people listening to this podcast, but I've tried to keep it as simple as possible. How do you, what's your own comments of what I've d described? And have, I, and have I done a reasonable job, Kurt? Yeah, I think you have. It's the big thing for me that I wanted to communicate was just because you have a, a WordPress website and something works doesn't mean that's the way it's supposed to work. Like, when you have a base blogging website and it sends, you know, a few notifications out, don't assume that your site can send to an email list of 1500 people. Um, it probably can't. So that's why you need that. That's why we're having this discussion about, you know, advancing your email game and having the right SMTP tools and the right tool to send the emails that you're looking for. Right. Yo, so um, we've got about other 10 minutes, I reckon. For the first half of the show so we can go into some of the solutions here nice. so 
I would say one of the main native WordPress plugin solutions that um, it to me what it offers on the marketing automation is top notch what it offers in the newsletter is there it does offer a small um, list of templates for your newsletter and it does provide a drag and drop newsletter builder it's very similar to active campaign in how it works in the marketing optimization but also what it offers on the newsletter side because active campaign for a number of years didn't offer anything when it came to the newsletter um, or it was very it's now improved that but it's not its top focus I would utilize the same language with fluent CRM but you can unlike some other marketing optimization focused native plugin solutions its actual newsletter builder isn't bad what would you say about this about fluent CRM Kurt I moved to fluent after using a different um, CRM tool and at first I found it to be kind of stark and sterile in its user experience just the way that it looked and it felt and the menus were kind of hidden in an odd way uh, for for that drag and drop portion but once I got used to it I found it to be much more um, powerful direct and clean in its experience so I, I've really kind of enjoyed the product. Um, sometimes I wish there was more uh, templates would be the, the key word there. I wish there was more variations of templates or more like, you know, this is a fun one. This is a influential one. This is a sales one. This is a, um, and some of the other products have that. And that's, I feel where Fluent, Fluent has its competition in its lack of pre-made yeah. inspirational content. You, you mean, know it you does want. have some, but they're only about half a dozen, aren't they? Yeah, and and it's not for nothing. They're not they're not impactfully beautiful, right? Um, some other products really have uh, you know more aggressive templates that are that are easier to look at, and that's why I was saying earlier, it's important to know what you want to produce and have a strategy and a plan to produce it, um, because Fluent's an awesome tool if you know what you want to put in the space it's got a full editor there but it doesn't give you a great foundation to launch from if you're not creative yeah i hope kirk's got my updated list that i sent to him yesterday oh i do um because he's gonna get lost because we're also going to go on to the next one so that's a great native solution and i think we've given you as some honest and great insights about oh it's strength. it's become my favorite over the last two years yeah. but it has it has, I won't say exactly weaknesses, but it's focus. It's very similar to Active Campaign, folks, in its focus. And, but yeah, so I'm going to repeat myself. Let's go on to Omasend. Omasend is not a native WordPress solution, but it's in the second bucket that I described at the beginning of this show. It's a SaaS solution, but it's wordpress plugin is very feature rich and it it works with wordpress it does it cannot work as well as a native solution but it's one of the top SaaS hybrid solutions around there and it offers a lot of functionality it offers um email newsletter and sms functionality and they've got a lot of experience in e um e-commerce with shopify and now increasingly with woocommerce it's not one that i've actually utilized myself um they're also a sponsor of this show i want to point out but it wouldn't uh, i'm giving you a um totally honest feedback it does seem to offer a lot a lot um 
it does have a free version and the standard version i think if you pay monthly is 16 dollars all these sasses they either there is there's a limit on how many subscribers you can have or there's a limit on how many email per month you can send out and it varies um that makes things confusing when you're trying to work out which one is best for you and offers the best value the only thing i would say before i throw it over to kurt with almost then is that um there are uh, th this will be in the show notes folks i did research about um about do the email get into your inbox with all these that we're discussing and one of the leading inbox testing firms said that Omnisend isn't the best and it isn't the worst. It's in the middle ground of the actual email getting into your inbox. But there's a lot of factors around that. So what do you think about Omnisend? I feel like when Omnisend came out, I got super excited because... It was like email and SMS together. And, you know, people that do any kind of research on communication, they, they start to realize that, you know, 10 to 15% open rate on email is acceptable, but like texting is a 90% open rate, right? And then email can be over, you know, 24 to 48 hours and texting can be within three minutes. And so when you look at the power of texting and SMS technology combined in a tool, you can't help but be really, really attracted or at least intrigued by what it's going to do. Um, where I kind of fell out with the the Omnisend uh, messaging, though, is I think about a lot of the clients that I work with, and they're generally having lists to start with in the 2,500 to 3,000 range, some of them, you know, up to 5,000. Um, if you're at 3,000 members on your list, you're at $70 a month. For Omnisend, and if you're at 5,000 users, you bump up to $90 a month. And $90 a month for messaging to go out, it all becomes a return on investment gain, right? Now you got to figure out what's well, cost me this much to send the email. For every dollar I spend, how much am I going to make in revenue in my product? And you have to be really clear about your goals at that point because each message is costing you something. Yeah, you've made some excellent points, and I, I just want to add to the excellent point Kirk's made. It's definitely not. It's not one of the best value. It's ten, it is. It's aiming at the um, upper. When it comes to UX design and usability, I think they've really got a great interface, and they've obviously been in the market a long time, and they've got a good UX design and it's reasonably easy to utilize but it is offering a lot of functionality as something offers more functionality it inevitably gets a bit more complicated um it's the pricing because a lot of people that are serious about building a membership website they they get into the three to five thousand and all these providers know this and they always they offer a reasonably free product but a lot of them are it's very cut back so you end up they also give a sliding scale on their pricing and it always starts at 500 but as soon as you bulk it up to the three to five thousand level where a lot of people find themselves in it gets a lot of these platforms these non-native wordpress um solutions they get expensive quite quickly there is one or two there is one particular one that is much more generous on the free program but it just cuts you down to subscribers though um they know what they're doing these SaaS platforms you can't you know they're there to make money folks um so it it's a polished solution but if you're not going to use the functionality and get that return there's probably better solutions but if you're the right person and you're going to use it all it's it's 
it's a pretty impressive solution. Would you agree with that, Kurt? I would, absolutely. And and like I said, I was really attracted to the idea of having email capability and SMS capability, you know, in one spot, um, you know, without having to do Twilio integrations and all those kinds of things. I, I thought it was a really, really good solution. Um, unfortunately, a lot of my clients in that audience range are more like hobbyists instead of businesses. And I feel that if they're going to spend $90 a month on communication, they need to be more of a business and less of a hobbyist. So it comes down to use case. You know, if I'm sending messaging that's going to generate sales and revenue, that's the cost of doing business. If I'm sending messages about like, you know, how I like to make cakes and eggs, um, then chances are that's that not the right platform. I'm going to, I might be wrong here. I was just thinking about this as Kirk was um, giving some great insights. I think it, if you're the person that's been using ConvertKit mm. and you're looking for SMS functionality, I think it's going to be a bit different because ConvertKit's got some strengths. And it also, it was the darling of the WordPress user, the professional blogger membership website, because it could do, I'm going to talk about ConvertKit, so I'm not going to go too far, but there's certain functionality it offered at the time that really appealed to the somebody trying to build a real e-learning business on WordPress, even though ConvertKit is a SaaS. But it's one of these hybrid SaaSes that offers a lot. But it offered a lot. And if you're using ConvertKit and you want SMS and you want the other bits, you, I think you're going to be attracted to OmniSend. Um I think if you're not that type of person, there's probably other solutions that are, offer a better price to functionality metrics. I think this is a good time for us to go to our middle break. We will be back in a few moments, folks. Tired of hosting providers that can't handle high traffic loads? Convesio is here to help. Our platform can handle any amount of traffic all without slowing down or crashing. With immediate Slack support, performance optimization, and a team that thrives on resolving technical challenges, your e-commerce business is in safe hands. Learn more about Convesio at Convesio.com. This podcast episode is brought to you by Lifter LMS, the leading learning management system solution for WordPress. If you or your client are creating any kind of online course, training-based membership website, or any type of e-learning project, Lifter LMS is the most secure, stable, well-supported solution on the market. Go to lifterlms.com and save 20% at checkout with coupon code PODCAST20. That's PODCAST20. Enjoy the rest of your show. We're coming back. We've had a feast, a feast of email plugins, sasses. We probably lost a lot of you, but no, I think we kept it. This could get a lot more techie, a lot more quick, folks. But I think we, with Kirk's help, I think we've managed to keep it in rein it in a bit um and i think we've provided some great knowledge before we go into our other providers in this space i want to point out that we've got a great free resource on facebook it's the membership machine facebook group if you're looking to build a membership website on wordpress or even on a SaaS like kajabi and you're looking for a great group of experts and people trying to build their membership website like you you really want to join this group because it offers a lot of functionality i'm always posting new content videos and other stuff on there i think you please join it it's totally free folks so that's the membership machine facebook group we'd love to see you there and become part of the tribe our um on we go on to one, WP Funnels and MailMint. So it's doing a lot of what Fluent CRM is doing. And I want to point out, we offer Fluent CRM 
and WP Foners with Melmint as part of our hosting plan, right, at WP Tonic. Now, it's a great company. Um, I've been pushing it a little bit. I should po push it a little bit more. Um, their strengths. Their, their strengths is when it comes to UX design, they've got one of the most polished native WordPress plugin UX designs is actually better than Fluent CRM. Fluent's been on the market a bit longer and it's actually a, a bigger company. But for what they've done, it's a really lovely UX design and it's got a lot of power built into it. They decided that they were going to offer a lot more function building newsletters and that side which is a little bit limited on fluent crm so they decided to add an extra plugin and call it melmin and it comes i think they're offering a lot more templates pre-designed and they're actually quite good and they've got a much more sophisticated email stroke newsletter builder the problem is is having them in two separate products i just don't agree with it i'm not going to i do understand why they did it there were business reasons but i think it's very confusing because they don't offer the you got you think that they're also offering an email sending engine as part of melmint but they're not you still got to set up and you you end up with two plugins as well we provide both but i just find their decision to be a bit confusing the price can't be is pretty attractive well i said the price with fluent crm for one website is is just under 130 dollars a year it's just amazing value um with with WP Funnels, it's 239 if you have both WP Funnels and Mill Mint, and I think you've got to have both. It's a bit more expensive, but it's a very sophisticated interface. What do you think of what I've said about WP Funnels plus Mill Mint? One of the first things I looked at was the templates. I thought they had a really good choice, and, and to me, templates aren't there, a template is not the content you're sending. I got to keep reminding people like you're not looking for a ready to send email. You're looking for the inspiration of your email message. And they have a lot of really good templates to get people started. Yeah. The idea of two products is confusing. And ever since uh, Russell Brunson started talking about that stupid potato gun, every time they want to call something a funnel in my mind, it's just a, it's just an email series. And to me, it complicates the discussion unnecessarily, right? I either have an email sequence or I have a standalone email and I don't understand why. Oh, you pointed to. out, this is the other thing, folks. Thanks, Kurt. That's fantastic insight. This whole business, because people get confused. This funnel, like somehow funnels actually going to make an enormous difference to your business. So they get into these elaborate, which Branson and his cronies encourage. It's a diversion, you know, but on the other hand, sending out a sequence when somebody signs up for your membership website or they're not used is important, but you don't have to build some monstrous, the you know, it's just over, it is important, but there's a lot of people that have overemphasized that side of things. Am I making any sense here? I hope you are because it's ringing true with me. I just, I believe that certain people take, you know, a, a, a sliver of something out of our, out of our tech world and try to convolute it into something genius. Mystical. Mystical. Yeah. And it. you know what? At the end of the day, you're sending an email. Are you sending a single email or are you sending a sequence of emails? And does this tool do both? And in this situation, it's really like two tools and they kind of separate those functions. Yeah. Um, the actual funnel building engine that comes from WP Funnels in UX and usability terms is one of the most 
impressive um, plugins in this area, folks. It's very imp And then they bolted on the the newsletter, make and having a nice selection of templates. They've got a really nice product. I've kept on using Fluent because I invested in it. But if you haven't invested, um, you can look at both and make your decision. And if you host with WP Tonic, you have access to either. And we're agnostic to some extent. We have recommendations, but they're both great. And we provide the email engine as well as part of our hosting package. Yep. Um, it's a great setup. Um, on to the next one. Bravo, formerly Send in Blue. Um, it's another darling um, pushed a lot. Um, I, I never, I don't think they got, I'm not, I think they did get bought out and that's why the name change. Um, it does a lot of what Omisen does. Um, it's, it's free product. They have a free product, but you can only send 30, 300 email per day. And it has a, um, a limit on the subscribers, the, the um, starter plan, or it doesn't. Or I think it doesn't actually. It's only you can only send three hundred email a day, right? Um, so you're going to look at the start. The starter plan is only nine dollars per month. That's the monthly price, and you can send out five thousand emails per month. They ain't bad. The business is uh, eighteen dollars, and it's still five thousand email per month. Um, it does a lot of the things that Omnisend does. It has got SMNS and it's one of the more popular players. I think it's a real Swiss army knife. I don't, I, I have used it and I have helped people, um, but it was like a year ago, so they might have improved it. I don't think the UX design is up to Omnisend level and it, but it does offer a lot of stuff. Um, to get all the stuff, you do have to go to the higher plans. Um, so what's your thoughts about Bravo, Kurt? I had a client that used Send in Blue when it was still Send in Blue. And that's what happened to all my hair, Jonathan. I pulled it out. Um, <laughs> I, I was not... I was not pleased. <laughs> I was what, not these pleased. are the reports I've been hearing. Yeah, um, I just struggled. I did. And um, I haven't, in all fairness, I haven't been into Brevo much. I haven't. Uh, one thing I do like about Brevo when I was doing the research for the show was when you go to their pricing table and you say, I'm a starter versus I'm a business. And you say, okay, I'm a business. I'm legit. Uh, when you look at the sliding scale, once you get to 20, and they do it by how many emails a month, not necessarily how Subscribe. many subscribers. Yeah. And once you get to the 20,000 emails a month, it's unlimited subscribers, which I really appreciated because so yeah. many other platforms. That's a great point, your point. I'm butting in. You've got a lot more to say, but that's a great point. Um, it's more straightforward there, child. A lot of these SaaS platforms, folks, they're, they're sneaky. They're sneaky, folks. But they're in business, folks, to some extent. But they're sneaky. Um, a lot of how much it's really going to cost you is a bit hidden, isn't it? And they're more upfront. But what was the things that you didn't like? What led to your hair loss then, Kurt? <laughs> well, for one, the, the client themselves was a little bit of a challenge and their subject matter wasn't in my my wheelhouse. But this these were the days when I was taking all the jobs. You know, someone, I, I was like, I got to do it. I need the money. Um, they said, oh, I use the send and blue thing. And then it was, you know, how does the API connect? How do we have to use an API? Do we use a automation tool? Do we bring in WP Fusion? The customer didn't want to pay for WP Fusion. They were under the impression that everything would just automatically connect, that we would have With a, a WordPress form. website. No, yeah. they're, they're plugging. I don't put them in this middle bucket of this hybrid solution. They're in the third category, folks. Yeah. Their integration with WordPress isn't fantastic. No. And so when you have a customer that says, I want to have a lead magnet and use WP forms, and when they fill in the form, I want them to get added to this list. And then I want that list to add a tag that sends this message. And that sounds 
what I just said might sound confusing to some, but that's like the simplest of integrations you want to see in a CRM with your WordPress website. And to make that become reality on that customer's budget without buying things like WP Fusion, it, it was a challenge to me at the time. And that's dated information that could have changed since the name change. But when it was send in blue, I lost some hair. Yeah. On to the totally opposite, which is Mail Poet. We actually provide oh. this at W. We provide a lot of marketing email solutions as part of our hosting yeah. package. But we offer Mail Poet. And unlike um, WP Funnels with MailMint, it does provide an email sending engine. You don't have to use it. Um, you can use another engine, but being that you're paying for it, you can use this and it's a pretty good email sending engine when i was looking at the delivery figures it does tend to get into your inbox right um i think it they were bought out by automatic uh, a while ago but um, which is the kind of parent company of wordpress now it does provide the engine if you've got the free plan you can send out to a uh, thousand subscribers which is quite generous. And then for 10 bucks, you can send out 5,000. Well, this is the whole thing. They change metaphor. So the free plan, it's subscribers. I presume you can send out as many email to those subscribers as you like. But then when you go to the $10 business plan, you can only send out 5,000 email, but you can have as many subscribers. I find that really confusing, right? Um, but we tend, if we've got people that are hosting with us and they just want to send a newsletter and they just want a really easy, it comes with a really easy builder. Um, it doesn't, I don't think it comes with that many templates. I might be wrong there, but I don't, I don't think it does. You're going to... Actually, one of the reasons I love MailPoet is... It does. Is the templates. The templates oh. are amazing. Yeah, I was um, they look great. They're modern. They're crisp. Um, and the other thing that MailPoet has that I absolutely love is they set up, and other tools have this now too. Um, a couple of other names at the top of my head have, have done this, but they send out like an automated um, recent posts messaging. So you can set the system to say, oh, when I, when I have a new blog post, send it to this list and it automates that process and does it for you. And that's a really great way to bring viewers back yeah, to you. I'm sorry about it, folks, but actually I do use it every week. And I did that, but I had my tam I, I coded my own template up, right? Or um and then I got one of our developers to code it up. I designed it and um that, I didn't realise that. But um they also offer some marketing automation. Um it's been in beta a while. I don't use it because um, I use Fluent. Um, I don't think it compares in any way to, to what Fluent or um, WP Funnels is offering there. I don't know. Am I off track there as well? Say you that might, again because I the, think I misunderstood The you. marketing automation side that they're offering. I So I think I'm in the same boat as you, Jonathan. I've used MailPoet as like a newsletter yeah. engine because I like the templates. And I, I know that makes me sound lazy, but the yeah. templates are awesome and it saves me time and it works. And then I use my Fluent for my real heavy lifting with emails and lists and automations. The next one we got is new. We've got a couple of native, like I say, that's a native solution, but it does provide the email engine with some strange from subscriber to 5,000 email feature. I don't, I, I don't work that one out. The next one is newsletter plugin. Um, I haven't really used this one, but I know it's really popular because it's really very Gutenberg based, which is a, a native page building technology. And it's $79 a year. And it's got a really modern interface. I presume they're offering a lot of templates as well. Um, I don't know because I haven't used it. But it's very popular because of the price. You do need an email sending engine. But for the price, I and it's got a nice interface to build. I presume also they're offering some nice templates as well. Am I right about this, Kurt? 
the templates I'm not super aware of. Um, what I did like about it was the amount, I mean, the sheer number of uh, integrations that they listed as part of their services. So, you know, WooCommerce works with different form builders, uh, has a composer, easy digital downloads, Google Analytics, the events calendar. I mean, it works with, like when we say it's a WordPress focused tool, those are like some key tools that people use in their WordPress sites. And this newsletter plugin has an integration for all of those major tools. And you can't beat the price, can you? 79 <laughs> bucks for a year for one site license. Yeah. Um, um, they're, if you really, the thing is there's some, if you're really in the newsletter, I would suggest that you really, you're just looking to send a newsletter that might mail poet for the free plan for a thousand subscribers. I think if you're in that smaller list, um, you can't beat it really. If you're looking for a native solution that provides the engine. Um, but if, but look at newsletter plugin, it's recommended. Um, on to the next one, which is Groundhog. Now, Groundhog um, is a native WordPress solution. Their pricing model, they've tried to uh, adopt a SaaS pricing model to some extent with a native plugin. It, um, when it comes to UX design, I don't think it matches up with either Fluent CRM or WP Funnels, with, um, but it offers a lot of integrations, a lot of integrations. When it comes to the marketing automation side of it, I think it does the job. I think when it comes to the UX design, the other two native marketing automation stroke newsletter offer better interfaces but it works and other people would have a different opinion to mine and I'm fine with it. When it comes to the actual newsletter, it's rather primitive. It's, it's really gone with this plain Jane interface design, mostly text-based and you can add an image and it will get into your inbox. But I think that's died down anyway because the mail clients have become even more sophisticated. But if you're just you're not bothered to build a a, mar, a branded newsletter, and you're happy with that kind of setup, you're going to be fine with it. So, what's your re response to what I've just said then? Groundhog is a unique use case platform situation. Um, I was a customer for years. Technically, I still am a customer. Um, from an email perspective. It, they've updated the uh, the email drag and drop editor in the last like year. Oh, I've done so. I'm out of yeah. date. Am I? So so they've updated the email editor. It's much more intuitive than it used to be. Um, there's a lot of strengths with this platform. Lots of templates. Lots of suggestions on how to use the platform for business. Um, lots of suggestions for automations. Um, their support offers courses where it gives you like, hey download this template, add it, and then that template could be used as a funnel. Um, so it has a lot of that support. Where I got distracted with Groundhog was all the bells and whistles, Jonathan, because um, it's you fall into that trap of just because it's there doesn't mean you need it. So it has um, project management cards, birthday reminders. Uh, I mean, it just goes uh, sales pipeline. I mean, it just has so many. It's almost like Salesforce and, and Fluent and these things combined. But quite honestly, the interface itself doesn't have that crisp professional appearance when you look at your screen. Like Fluent to me looks a little more sterile and business-like and Groundhog looks more hobbyist and fun-like. But it's not priced like a hobbyist and fun-like yeah. platform. It's priced like, like it's a serious to-do. Um, Do you think... I might be totally wrong here. Do you think in some ways it's the native it's the native version of bravo in it offers a ton of stuff doesn't it, it, it offers offers a ton of stuff but as your comments with bravo it can but i think it because bravo use yeah am I, am I totally wrong there or is there some linkage 
I don't know. I think f from a business perspective, um, you know, there's a ton of SaaS platforms out there, like your all-in-one business platform, uh, Sweet Dash. You know, there's all these things like that. And it, from a certain perspective, I think Groundhog attempted to fit some of that. And I think what happened is there's just so many tools and so many things in Groundhog that it can actually become more of a distraction than a benefit. And I know that I say that in the weirdest, strangest, sideways kind of way, but um, I was a customer for years. And like I said, technically still am, um, but it's not cheap. And um, and there, there's just a lot in there. And, and if you try to use all those tools, if you're a solopreneur and you're really trying to leverage all those things, um, sometimes th the tool itself distracts you from your own success. Yeah, it can become too complicated, can't it? I know it's yeah. All right, um, let's go. Let's go. In some ways, to the totally opposite, a laser focus to its user base. Somebody that started something and had a, a real laser focus at its target audience and really hit bullseye, and that's convert kit. And the founder, Nate, he really was a power blogger himself and built up some really impressive digital businesses through lead magnets and offering PDF books and that, and really understood influencers and bloggers and people trying to build membership online businesses. And there was a real niche about and a lot of these people were using WordPress and it was very clum. A lot of them were using Mailchimp or they were using some other really clunky email system. And he offered really scripts that were pre-designed for that particular niche and offered landing page building landing pages really easy and linking all the things that particular large group of bloggers influencers would need and it really became the darling of it and it they have a free plan and it uh, that start up to 10,000 subscribers I think and then the creative is goes down to 1,000 subscribers but I 1,000 subscribers, so that blew me away. And then they got the Pro, which is 1,000 subscribers for 59. But for the free plan, I'm pretty sure, unless I, unless I made an uh, error, you get 10,000 subscribers, but I think they pin you down on, on the amount of email you can send. But their pricing seemed a bit odd. Very similar to uh, mail, mail posts pricing it's, structure seemed a bit odd to me it's confusing because that newsletter thing that says sign up for free up to ten thousand subscribers you can send one email sequence right a month so, right so you can send one email up to ten thousand people whereas you know when the creator and the pro things you can send unlimited email sequences um up to five thousand subscribers well i have my my pricing thing i set at five thousand so um because i was really trying to compare you know on that sliding scale what were these things all like for that that size audience and so the pro version i'm get, showing at 93 dollars a month um for up to five thousand subscribers with unlimited email sequences yeah i find the whole language and their pricing structures a little bit confusing um uh, i would i I'm tempted to say misleading a little bit, but I think that would be a bit strong. Um, I don't know. It's in that grey area. So saying misleading is a bit too strong a word, but I'm struggling for the right. And the other problem with it, folks, is is that it does come with a nice new newsletter builder. Um, it does come with um, templates. Its main driver was integrating it with landing pages. and But the thing is, and it did appeal to the people that were using WordPress, and building a landing page when it came out was a real pain. 
But with modern page builders like Elementor or what we love, Cadence WP, building a landing page, and um, a lot of these page builders come with a library of landing pages. Our, our offering with Cadence WP, where we've built our own starter websites, we provide a lot, you know, provides a template landing pages, and they're really easy to edit. So one of the major drivers for ConvertKit is gone down. If you're in the WordPress space, or, um, it depends what you're using. But the people that are using it love it, don't they? Oh, is he gone? I think my co-host is gone. Oh, he's come back. I just have to step away for a second. I'll be right back. All right. Um, so I'm going to natter on until he comes back. But... With that blogging um, course crowd, that building a membership website, it um, it is still very popular. And I think if you don't want to use a native WordPress solution and you're looking for something that is in the middle ground, um, I can really see why you still won't be attracted to it. The only thing, it's a bit like what we said about Omisend, is it, if you get into that um, 3,000 to 5,000, which is where a lot of people are, where they've moved on from a very, very small list and they've managed to build it up, you can it can be very profitable to have a a targeted newsletter list between three and five thousand it gets rather expensive doesn't it um and i think they know it convert kit gets very expensive doesn't it oh yeah yeah it's how many times have you talked to a client in the last year jonathan where you've said oh well, what are you using for your crm because you offer fluent you know with with the hosting and then They'll say, oh, well, I'm using Keep right now or Active Campaign or, or you know, the what Infusionsoft became Keep, right? Um, you say, what are you paying for, you know, your CRM tool? And they'll be like, oh, $1,700 a month or something. And you're like, oh, my goodness. How in the world are you? Because, you know, you and I both understand that if we use a fully native solution in the WordPress site and just, you know, power it with a mail engine, we're, we're going to be able to save them. You know, they'll be paying pennies on a dollar. Yeah, but the problem is it's it's rebuilding. If you're using something like Active Campaign and you've built up very complicated marketing automations, having to rebuild those because they offer no mythology to migrate the, nope. the the business logic. They they're not going to folks and trying to rebuild that all in fluent. I have done it. Um, it is not a cheap. Um, and if you've got very complicated ones, it is a bit a bit of a nightmare. It can be done, and it's still you would save still a lot of money. It's just the pain of having to go through it. I think all, but the reality is, I think people should treat it as the opportunity to have a look at these automations, because um, a lot of people just build them out and build them out and build them out. And they're not getting a lot from the automations. And you can take it as an opportunity to cut at least 50% or less of the automations that are not really on reflection doing much for the business anyway. Would you agree with that? I definitely agree. I'm also a huge proponent of scrubbing and cleaning uh, your mail list periodically because... Yeah. Um, a, you have people join your list that are, it's a, just spam, web spam that's come through your web form or something like that. And so uh, anything that's not a real name, anything that's obviously a fake email address, you know, go ahead and scrub that out of there. Yeah. And there's tools to do that online. If, you, so, if you've got three to 5,000, you should do it like once a year, I think. Um, there are, there's free, but I, there are inexpensive, I would use a paid service myself. Yeah. And export the list input import it and it will tell you if these people if it, the email is bouncing 
The reason why you've got to do that, folks, if you don't do it once a year, it will affect the delivery of your emails because it's yep. um, hard bounces, as it's called, really um, are a sign that you might be a sca uh, scammer to some extent. You might be a... Yeah, so you clean your list once a year. If you're, if you're getting into the 10, 20, 30... 50, 100, half a million, you should be doing it at least every six months, every three months. And if you're getting in the top echelon, you really should um, be hiring somebody like us. And we can, uh, part of our, of the support package, we do it monthly because if you're in the hundreds of thousands, you won't be utilising any of these services anyway, probably you will probably be linking it to a provider like Amazon Web Services, their email. But I wouldn't really suggest that for anybody in the, let's say, five to 50,000 email area. I yeah. think it's only worth the effort if you're looking at you're between 50 to 100 plus emails per month, 100,000. Um, then using Amazon Web Services, it's worth, worth all. It's got to be managed much more, but there's enormous cost savings. But they only work if you're sending out. If you're between fifty to a hundred or hundred thousand plus, in my opinion, a lot of people ain't going to agree with me there. But that's my fault. On to the last one, which is a darling as well, and I can understand it. Is Mailer Light? It's a French company, but we won't hold that against them. Um, bonjour. I, I bonjour. Got a love, I've got a love hate with France. I've spent many happy times in France. It's just Parisians aren't so nice. Uh, um, so, um, and anybody that's been to Paris will tell you that. Uh, um, so. They offer a free plan and it's 12,000 emails with no subscriber. Or is it a thousand subscribers? Up to a thousand. Which ain't bad, is it? A thousand yeah. subscribers and 12,000 emails. That ain't ba bad value. It's a like on the send and some of the other provide, um I think we would say that with Bravo as well. It's a kind of Swiss Army knife. They offer landing pages, marketing automations, um, a good library. I think you get what you pay. I think they provide, I think even with the free plan, their library of templates isn't bad. I think if you go with the next level up, which is $15, but you with a limit of 5,000 emails per month, which ain't bad. Um, I don't think it does ev anything that particularly fantastic. Um, but it doesn't do things badly either. The sheer number of templates that they offer through their website is it's confounding. It almost makes me wonder if they have like a, um, like a community, uh, repository where people submit stuff and, and make it available because they've just got pages and pages and pages of templates available. And then the other thing that distracted me while looking at their offer was they've got their own website builder yeah. where people can build their own sites and yeah, put things I wouldn't, I wouldn't use it, folks. No, that that to me is like, uh, I don't know what that is. I, I was like, oh, okay, this is this is a yellow flag at best. I haven't looked at the landing page. It was like um like convert kit they've got a landing page builder i think that's okay but i haven't used it for quite a while um and they've got the marketing optimization side i haven't used that the actual marketing optimization builder but they're offering a lot um a lot of it isn't terrible but it isn't fantastic but on the e newsletter email sending and what they give you for the free plan and even the basic the basic plan the value to function matrix dies down a bit but on the free plan you can't beat it if you're looking for a SAS. would you agree with that 
I can see why a lot of people do love it, though, don't you? I am, and I tell my customers this, so it's not a it's not a secret. I'm design handicapped. I'm great if someone gives me assets and I have people on my team to do design if I need it. But personally, I'm design handicapped. So when I see that they offer over 250 templates, I'm like, I'm pretty intrigued. It's a great it's a great offer. It's a good value, especially for the dollar that's proposed. Um, I just don't know that it would be the perfect fit for for a lot of the projects that I work with. It comes down to use case. Yeah, I think you, I, I think if you're just going to use it for the newsletter, folks, I think you'd be fine. I think, especially on the free, and I just think, by, but my experience with it is about eighteen months old, folks. Um, things change rapidly in this sector. It just felt that the other fact, the other, and they got a lot of other bits are okay, but they're not best of breed either. Um, and they're appealing to very broad target, the small business sector, the medium business sector, where they're, they're I have different criticisms of ConvertKit, but those criticisms are different. It's more about, it gets really expensive really quickly, but um, they've got a more laser focus to the people that they were going to aim their product up. And it really met the requirements where um, MailLite is, is a very more generalistic, generalized product aimed at a much bigger target audience is that making sense it is all right um now when it comes to if you why would i think if you're gonna i personally think if if price if price is really important and you really don't want to use a native wordpress solution and you're looking for free and you're just looking for value for money and you don't want to use a native WordPress solution, I think you can't beat MailerLite, can you? No. You well, can. no, no, you're, you're right. That'd be a good one. Yeah, you can't beat it compared. Now, if you're looking, I'm not, I can't remember email like provides SMS. I'd be surprised if they provide that on the free I don't, plan. I don't see it listed. No. So if that's big, um, look at Omersend. And, and especially the other factor with MailerLite is if you're just going to build a newsletter and send it out through their system, you'll be fine. If you're trying to integrate the other bits with WordPress, their plugin isn't that impressive in my it might have changed you're you're gonna get frustrated very quickly based on my previous experiences but if you treat it totally separate and just sending out a newsletter it's when you try and integrate it with a learning management system and everything blah blah it ain't gonna work well and and if you then look at wp fusion they, their API, Mailer Lights API, isn't that particularly impressive, right? So I would suggest that just use it for the newsletter for the 12,000 a month for the thousand subscribers. Just use it for what the best value that it offers. But don't think you're, you're going to do a lot of optimizations and that with your native learning management system on WordPress or even with other SASs, other SASs like Teachable and that, you're gonna you're gonna be a bit disappointed, I think. You... There's something that comes up with me and, and it the idea of using a SAS. So not for nothing, I get a lot of spam and I can look at one pop up and go, oh, that's a convert kit. And I look at the bottom, it says sent via convert kit. Like there's just a certain look to them. And then I get put off when I see that something came from MailChimp or something came from. Oh, well, you're a snob, though, aren't you? No, well, I guess I am a snob in that way. 
Well, when you're, I a profe- use you're a professional snobber, are you? Yes. When I use something that's native to the site, you know, whether it's yeah. Fluent or Groundhog or whatever, I feel like there's better branding yeah. coming from the source of who that's sent from. True. Totally yeah. true. Now, if you're looking at a native solution and you just want a newsletter and you've got a small list and it might grow a little bit, but you're between 500 and maybe a couple of thousand people, I don't think you can beat MailPoet nope. even now for the templates that it provides, which Kurt pointed out, it does provide a lot. And it's got an easy builder. You can't beat MailPoet if that's all you want to do. Now, but if you're building a course and you really you, you really want to build a real ongoing business, you're going to be looking at automation. But the good news is you can have Fluent CRM Work, and it works quite happily with MailPoet. You can just use MailPoet for the newsletter. And then you don't have to use their email engine. It will quite happily allow you to use a third-party email engine, um, which, is, which is what Fluent CRM. So you could just use Fluent CRM for the marketing automation and use MailPoet for your newsletter. But it does mean you've got two plugins. But a lot of people do that. Um, so if you're just looking for the newsletter, um, I don't think you can meet, beat MailPoet. Would you agree with that? I 100% agree. A MailPoet's a go-to for me and uh, recommending to my clients as well. Now, when it comes to the marketing automation, like I say, I don't think you can beat Fluent CRM. The only one that I think really challenges it and you really got to look at both because they've got strengths and weaknesses is WP funnels with MailMint. I don't, I think you got, to, if you are going to use, look at WP funnel, you got to buy both. You can't just buy WP funnels. You got to go for WP funnels and MailMint, oh, which is, I'm bored having to say both names anyway. Uh, um, but we provide that at WP Tonic. But if you're not with WP Tonic, and you really got to look at both, because what of the strengths of WP Funnels are a bit different to the strengths of Fluent CRM. But if you're in marketing automation, I think you could be happy with either. But you're just going to have to do a bit of a dive. What do you reckon there, Kurt? I like the MailMint because of the extra design features that you get with it. Yeah. And so I f- depends on the client. It really does. If I've got someone, like I mentioned, sterile is the word I use, but if they're sterile, more business-like, and they're more um, resolute on what they're going to do with the platform, then Fluent's probably their deal, right? It's going to meet their needs. Well, you know, it's, all the, it's, not, it's all the, all the automation yeah. that they've done and other people. It is yeah. seen as the leader. And, it, and it, unlike Groundhog, it's not trying to be a quasar SaaS solution yeah um, it, it, yeah. it, it it's un, it understand that it's a native wordpress plugin solution it's um and i really don't want to say anything disparaging against groundhog i, no, I was a it works. customer but the my comment was you know i believe he came from infusionsoft before he made groundhog yes. and then so you have all of these extra tools and some people might find them really useful so if that's if that's your wheelhouse and you want you know, a sales pipeline and a birthday reminder and a project management cards like Trello. If you want all that in your deal, it's it's there. Um, but again, when I think about use case and clients, um, I have clients that are very sterile, resolute, know what they want. And the automizations, like especially the, the integration with Lifter LMS and Fluent is phenomenal. Um, that's the tool. Uh, if, um, if they're more non-resolute and more flighty you know and more open and artistic then i'm probably going to go the yeah, mailman that type because... is going to find fluent crm they're more not difficult. Gonna, they're, yeah. they're not going to be entirely satisfied with it even though it does the business it does the marketing automation that they Cause, want because they want ma- pretty it, it is his major weakness that is their template library um it does the job it's a bit um, but it's not great but if you if you want something that provides 
the functionality but also the designs you're going to be happier with wp funnels and mailmen that's how i've rationalized it um, but if you're just looking for templates and a newsletter you're going to be happy with mailpilot but you're not going to be happy if you want to do marketing automation yeah yeah I think that's the best way. But if you're not interested in any native solution, you're going to be happy with um, MailerLite. Now, when it comes to the engines with these native solutions, there's um, the one that we are partner with and we provide in one package is SendGrid. Mm -hmm. Now, SendGrid has a free plan, but you can only send out 100 emails per day. So... You can use it for testing, but that's about it. Um, the essential is nineteen ninety five per month, and you can send out a hundred thousand email. Yeah, and it's a bargain. I went from one SMTP. And if somebody says to you that's too expensive for hundred, you, you need to get a gun and shoot them. Basically, I don't. I have no idea what the hell they're talking about. Basically, because that covers about ninety percent of people that their email sending needs won't it yeah yeah and jonathan i hate to do this to you but i'm gonna leave you with the closing words and uh i have to oh well let's wrap it up now let's wrap it up now okay so uh, what's the best way that people can find more about you well manana .com is our agency website but if you'd like to make that personal connection i'm on linkedin almost every day and as Jonathan is very fond of me saying, I am the only Kurt Von Onen on LinkedIn, which makes it easy to find me. Yeah, we will be back next week with another great show, Internal, where we're a guest. Hopefully you enjoyed this. Give us some feedback. We'll see you next week, folks. Bye. <laughs>